taking a week off last week at Darlington, it's time to get back to business for the NSRA Hershey's Cup Series non-charter drivers as we get set to begin our race weekend here in the desert, Phoenix International Raceway. Race number 14 of the schedule for the Hershey's Cup Series non-charter drivers getting set to take place here today. Obviously, these drivers would love to be able to finish in the top seven so they can take part in not just one, but two races here this weekend with the Hershey's Cup Series main event later on in a couple of days. But coming into this race, we had some movers and shakers two weeks ago at Charlotte of some drivers that popped up into the top five in the point stands, and obviously that's where these drivers want to be at season's end to be able to get one of the five vacant charters that will be left open once season four comes to a close heading into season five of Hershey's Cup Series competition. Elijah Gilbert, or make that, sorry, make that Daniel Gilbert, rather, is still the points leader by 12 points over Kev Shearer. Daniel Olsen is third in points, but now Caleb Farrell, he actually moved back up into the top five in the points. He's now fourth in the stands, and Seth Cole has now moved up into fifth. Sean Henley is sixth. He rolls off from the outside of the front row here today at Phoenix. Then it's going to be David Culpepper, who is in seventh, Eighth is Paul Minnick. He's had a good couple of runs the last couple of weeks, as has Steven Gonzalez, who picked up the win last week at Charlotte. He's now up to ninth, and Quentin Moore completes your top ten in the points coming into today's race. If you've never followed Energy 2003 off, online, or offline racing, I should say, you don't know the fact that Phoenix Racing is also, Raceway is also known as Tweenix Raceway. We're going to get command real quick. Drivers, start your engines! And so this is kind of a, a track that Tweenix Racing in particular uh, kind of considers a home track. Sean Henley out of Tweenix Races. As a matter of fact, he's the only Tweenix car now that's yet to go to victory lane. Steven Gonzalez picking up a non-charter win last week. And of course, over in the Charter Series, James McLeod and Dylan Pote with two wins apiece this season. So Sean Henley, the lone man out, and we'll have to see if maybe... He could put his Twinks Racing Chevrolet in victory lane here at the track that has been dubbed Twinix Raceway by uh, Charles Jackson. Steven Gonzalez rolling off there from it's like the 11th position. Points leader Daniel Gilbert starting up in 14th. And I mentioned Paul Minnick, that Buick having a good season so far. Up in the top 10 the standings, coming into this race, 8th in points, and he's rolling off from the 8th position, not too far behind his teammate out of uh, James Qualls Motorsports, that 26 of Matt McIntyre. But Jonathan Zorlin in the number 93 out of Fire Ice Racing will get us underway. Green flag is out. There'll be 32 laps of racing here today, a little bit longer than these non-charter drivers are used to as they're going to go three wide further back here. Yeah, that's James Richardson to the bottom. Matt McIntyre put in the middle and Sean Henley now stuck up on the outside line. No contact made there. A little bit of rubbing doors as they fight for position heading into three. They're going to go three wide a little bit further back there as well. Nick Gunther going to stick it down to the inside three wide. And the guy that's got to be loving seeing this behind him has got to be Jonathan Zorlin. Oh, no, not four wide, and there they go! Matt McIntyre, Daniel Olson, Sean Henley into the wall, and there go some others. Chris Dollarton's collected, and now he sweeps down in front of other drivers, including Tyler Deaver. They're still wrecking up ahead. Kev Shearer's gotten a piece of it. I don't know who all really was involved. Elijah Gilbert, Becca Tellier, and they're still wrecking up ahead. Charles Jackson, our winner from Richmond's involved. Someone up here is smoking. Henley just turned Chris Dollarton. That's Matt McIntyre coming to pit road along with DJ Curtis and Quentin Moore. And we are under caution already for the first time today. There's Chloe Erickson, a lot of damage to her car. Caleb Farrell's got damage on the left side of his MetLife Chevrolet. And like I said, that did not take long at all to have us under our first caution of the day. And just like that, I mean, you don't really think of the big one when you come to a track like Phoenix, but I think we just had the big one. I counted at least 14 drivers. We may have had upwards to 20 drivers involved in that in one way or another. Jonathan Zorling was out ahead of all of that, and he will lead us under our first caution of the day. So let's take back, take a look back, I should say, at a replay of what brought out this first caution of the day at Phoenix Raceway. Well, here it was. And they were three wide. Three wide was working. Then they went four wide. 
and Sean Henley tried sticking it down to the inside of Daniel Olsen. Matt McIntyre got loose. There's not a whole lot of banking here at Phoenix, so if your car gets loose, you're going to drift a long ways up the track. Matt McIntyre just gets hooked as well by Henley. Daniel Olsen hardened to the wall. Now, I thought they were all going to keep it up there and nobody else was going to get involved, but right there, it looked like there was some contact between uh, Becca Tellier and Elijah Gilbert. That sent them up into this, and there you see Chris Dalton gets into the back of Becca Tellier, and that sent him down in front of Cole Deaver, Tyler Deaver, and others, and that's how the wreck continued on down the back straightaway. Phil Parker gets involved. There's DJ Curtis, Kev Shearer. Alex Gray might have gotten a piece. Carson Gum runs into the back of Cody Smart. And then, it's not over. They still wreck further up here. That's uh, Charles Jackson and Chloe Erickson. Now, how did they wreck? I don't think they got a piece of the earlier incident. Oh, okay. So, they, they had all avoided. And then, there's going to be contact right there. Caleb Farrell just kind of comes up into Jackson and... Uh, Christian Merrick Jr. comes up into Chloe Erickson. He keeps it going, though. And then Jackson and Farrell go up the racetrack, completely wad Chloe Erickson into the fence, and then everybody's trying to go by, trying to avoid, and I think there were a couple of other drivers that might have actually gotten a piece of this one. Angel Navarro, Seth Cole, Johnson, Adino, those three Toyotas split this mayhem. And, yeah, I think the 89 of Quentin Moore is going to hit somebody here because his engine was smoking. He might get into Charles Jackson right there, and indeed he does. Boy, that's a hard hit there on the left front of his machine. DJ Curtis, he's going to get a hit right there. And that's what caused both the 89 and the 55 to start smoking. So I think we're going to have at least 12 to 14 drivers out of the race after this one, and we only completed two laps in the race up to this point. Well, we've got the signal one lap to green. A couple of cars will lap in the inside line off the lead lap. Matt McIntyre in the 26, Charles Jackson in the 238. It'll be Zorlin, the race leader, when we go back green with Nick Gunther second, James Richardson third, fourth is Tripitak Uvernia with Dougie Shears in fifth. The rest of your top ten are Steven Gonzalez, Paul Minnick, Chelsea Bowles, David Culpepper, and Henry Nova out of the race. Surprisingly enough, it's only seven drivers. I expected a lot more than that. Chloe Erickson is out of the race, along with Quentin Moore, Chris Dollerton, Elijah Gilbert, Daniel Olson, Becca Tellier, and DJ Curtis. The two that really stand out are uh, Daniel Olson, who came in third in the points standings, and Quentin Moore, who came in tenth in points, both out of the race. So, 35 cars still running, 33 of them still on the lead lap. Green flag back out on lap 7 of 32. Dorland, Gunther, Richardson, they all made very quick work of the slower damaged lap machines of Matt McIntyre and Charles Jackson. So now we got to see if anybody's going to have anything for that 93 car. James Richardson to the inside of Nick Gunther looking for the second position. Dougie Shears, nice run there as he's going to slide right on by Vernio and now has his sights set on third place, James Richardson. 21 car got a heck of a run through three and four. Not going to be able to take the spot, at least this time. Richardson will hang on to it. Meanwhile, Nick Gunther getting a big run on Jonathan Zorlin going down here into three. Going to try to take a peek to the inside. little contact there as he got into the left rear. Nearly spun himself and Zorlin around. And the caution is out. So that heated battle going to be put on ice at least for the moment. Yellow flag waving for the second time here today at Phoenix. And I got to think, got to attribute the cautions coming out and the, the hard racing, the possible, you know, potential wrecking we're seeing even up here at the front of the field has to be due to the track conditions. Not a whole lot of banking. Hot weather, sunny all day. The track's got to be slick, so these drivers are fighting for every bit of grip they can possibly get. So the caution flag is out again. Apparently, whatever the incident was, it was able to quickly disperse itself before the leaders got there. And I don't really see any uh, smoke lingering anywhere, so I'm not exactly sure where it happened. So we will step aside, take a look at a replay, and we'll put us under the caution for the second time here today at Phoenix International Raceway as Jonathan Zorlin continues to show the way. And another incident that carried from turn one pretty much over to the back straightaway. There you see Henry Nova was kind of wadded in behind the two lap cars of Charles Jackson and Matt McIntyre. 
hooks Jackson up into the 26. So both cars are up and into the wall. Wow, LaPlante got loose. Nearly spun it right in front of Angel Navarro. But then watch right here as Nova's trying to get to the inside. Noah Cars and Kev Shearer are already double wide. So there wasn't any room and Cars tried to stick his car into a space that really didn't have room for any any uh, vehicle to fit. And Kev Shearer gets hooked up into the outside wall as well. So right now... A lot of drivers that are running well in the points stand taking some hits here early on. Kev Shearer second in the points coming to this race. We've already documented Caleb Farrell but getting involved in a wreck. Daniel Olsen out of the race. Not looking good right now for a lot of these drivers that came into this race inside the top five in the points stands. Looks like they may not be staying there after this race is done unless something happens in the second half of this event. But looks like Matt McIntyre's day is now over. Charles Jackson is going to be coming to pit road to repair some damage and some other drivers getting some pieces of this as well. So let's go back now for the green flag and get ready for yet another restart at Phoenix. After that incident, only one driver going behind the wall, and that being Matt McIntyre. Tyler Deaver, though, had to come down pit road, and uh, they spent a little extra time on that number 96 good wrench service plus Dodge Dart. So the Rio race winner is now a lap down. Charles Jackson is now two laps down to the race leader, Jonathan Zorlin, who will restart ahead of Nick Gunther, James Richardson, Dougie Shears, and Tripataki Bernio, then Steven Gonzalez, Chelsea Bowles, Paul Minnick, and now cracking the top 10 in ninth place, Jordan Lopez, and points leader, Daniel Gilbert, up in 10th. Green flag back out once again, this time on lap 13 of 32. We still have 20 laps to go here at Phoenix. Tyler Deaver appears to be somewhat up to speed. Nick Gunther not able to get around him. Actually almost made some contact there with Deaver trying to get that spot. And now that's going to allow James Richardson to try and get to the bottom. The battle for second going on, but the caution flag is out once again. So Zorlin having the benefit of running a number of these laps out in front, but under the yellow flag. So caution waves again. And it looks like another incident, this time on the back straightaway. So the exit of turn two seems to be the biggest trouble spot for these drivers here today. Zorlin, I think he would be more than willing to lead every single lap of this race under caution if it means him picking up a victory, but still a long ways to go. Let's see what happened. Third caution of the day here at Phoenix. Now this time going to be involving the 86 of our Bristol Dirt winner, Zachary Stoltz. I can't tell. He might have had some contact from LaPlante, but from what it looks like, 86 car snapped loose before LaPlante even touched him. Seth Cole absolutely nowhere to go. That's a guy that came in fifth in the point standings. Carson Gum gets collected there. John Adino involved. Philip Parker's involved. Sean Henley is going to run into the back of Citadino. Henry Nova doesn't slow down. He clobbers Phil Parker, and Kev Shear gets a piece of this as well. It's another thing about uh, the slick racing conditions. Brakes don't necessarily work all that well with the tire heat there in the brake rotors. It just heats them up, and you slam the brakes, and the thing slides a couple hundred feet extra than what you want it to. So... There is what remains of the Interstate Batteries Toyota Camry. Looks like fifth in the points today. And Seth Cole will not be in the top five in the points when this race completes. So we may end up seeing somebody else pop up into the top five in points after this one's done now. As at this point, according to my calculations, four of the drivers that came into this race in the top five in the stands have encountered problems in one way or another. We have not yet gotten the signal one lap to green. I'm expecting we will get that the next time around, which gives us an opportunity to give you a full field rundown at the halfway point of this race. Jonathan Zorlin has led every lap so far. Second place is Nick Gunther. Third place, James Richardson. Fourth is Dougie Shears. Fifth place is Chelsea Bowles. Sixth place is going to be Tripentacchio Vernio with Steven Gonzalez there hanging in seventh. Eighth is Jordan Lopez. Ninth is Daniel Gilbert. Paul Minnick. Right now, complete your top 10. 11th is Danny Culpepper. 12th place, Stephen Power the third. Caleb Farrell's up to 13th. Joshua Sakul is in 14th with Alex Gray, 15th. 16th place is Trace Williams, 17th, Christian Merrick Jr. 18th is Alex Miller. 19th is Angel Navarro with Cody Smart, 20th. 
Ryan George, 21st, 22nd place is Austin LaPlante. 23rd, Kev Shearer, still forging on. 24th, Cole Deaver. 25th is Noah Cars. 26th, John Cittadino. 27th is Zachary Stoltz. And 28th, last car in the lead lap, is Sean Henley. Tyler Deaver, still a lap down. He's 29th. 30th is Seth Cole, also off the lead lap. And then two laps down is Charles Jackson. After that last incident, two more drivers back behind the wall. Henry Nova and Phil Parker joining Matt McIntyre. Chloe Erickson, Quentin Moore, Chris Dollerton, Elijah Gilbert, Daniel Olson, Becca Tellier, and DJ Curtis. Carson Gumbs also off the lead lap. I did not notice that. He's 31st. One lap down. So we are past the halfway point. Jonathan Zorlin. We know Tyler Deaver is up to speed. Zorlin was able to get by him on the last restart, will he be able to do it again this time? Green flag out. Deaver hung with Zorlin. And Zorlin will not clear him going into turn one. So this could get very interesting up at the front. Oh, he cleared him this time. And now Gunther's left to have to battle with him again. Look at James Richardson. Thinking about three wide, sticking the lap car in the middle. Like he's going to do it. He's going for the second position. It's tight there coming off turn four. Gunther gets the run on the outside line. Can't quite clear Tyler Deaver going into one. Now he does. So Gunther now moves into second and the caution's out again. Another incident looks like this time in turn one. Battle for second is on behind Zorlin. Richardson to the bottom. Gunther going to rim ride the high side. Gunther will have the run off the corner as Richardson can't quite get back to the throttle as quickly. And it's out of turn four there, looks like. And the caution waves one more time. So Zorlin, take nothing away from him. He's been getting really good restarts. Has really not allowed anyone to get to him in the last couple of restarts to be able to battle him for the lead potential race win. But these cautions are certainly helping him out as well. Yellow flag out for the fourth time today. Let's go back and see what brought this one out. Well, this is what we call, in racing terms, the proverbial hornet's nest. Look at this. Four wide, wadded up. Seth Cole, Carson Gum, Charles Jackson, lap machines, all in that mix, causing drivers difficulty of getting by. And the end result right there, I think either Jackson came down or Carson Gum slid up. Gets into Charles Jackson. What an avoidance by Daniel Gilbert. Literally kind of almost shoving David Culpepper to be able to make room to get by. And Austin LaPlante does a nice job getting through there as well. Carson Gum's car comes to rest there. Out of turn number four, John Cittadino gets by, and I believe Sean Henley at the time dove to pit road in order to avoid this. So that is what brought out the caution. Two cars basically involved in this one. It's a wonder we didn't have more in an incident out of turn number four. Charles Jackson and Carson Gum, the two drivers involved in that incident, have taken their cars now back behind the wall. So what's been a, a dismal day for both those drivers comes to an end now as both are behind the wall in the garage area. It will be a single file restart for the remainder of these uh, cautions, whatever we get, as we will be restarting with a total of nine laps to go. So now it's going to be interesting to see if anything's, anybody's got anything for Jonathan Zorland. Zorland's been good with these restarts, but now he's got no lap traffic to help hold up second on back. Gunther and Richardson right behind him. Green flag back out. James Richardson going to continue that battle he and Gunther have had for the last couple of restarts for that second position. Little contact there between the two. Tyler Deaver there. He is a lap down. That fourth car in line is now Chelsea Bowles tries getting by him so she can get up there and challenge with the top trio. Caution out again. Fifth caution of the day. We have run five cautions in the last 25 laps. We will get back green, but hopefully it will finish under green. I don't have much hope for it, though. And you got to wonder, is this a sign of things to come? for the Hershey's Cup Series race. The last time we ended up having a race where it was a wreck fest 
we ended up having the announcement that Hershey's Cup Series officials were going to make that Hershey's Cup Series charter race caution free. That could be something that they might be thinking about doing here for the upcoming Hershey's Cup Series charter race in a couple of days. Caution is out again. Let's see what happened. Now, well, this one's going to be the lap car of Seth Cole. Trace Williams getting by on the outside, and Daniel Gilbert just didn't really give the 79 any room. Slid up into him, and oh man, tough break there for Paul Minnick. Was having such a good run. Cody Smart and Alex Miller, along with John Cedino, going to get collected up in this one as well. Wow, look at Noah Cars and Cole Deaver split the gap to get through. That was a close call for both of those Dodge Darts. They darted through the wreck. Ha ha ha, bad jokes. Back to the restart. So we will indeed go back green flag racing before the checkered flag waves. It'll be with a total of four laps to go. Question is, though, will those final four laps be run under green or will we see yet another caution? Somehow I have the feeling it's more the latter rather than the former. But it'll be Jonathan Zorland with Nick Gunther, James Richardson, Chelsea Bowles. They have all now cleared any lap traffic. You've got the lap car of Tyler Deaver lined up there behind the 56. But then in fifth place is Dougie Shears. Jordan Lopez is sixth. Then Vernio, Pollard, Gonzalez, and Gray. That is your top ten. Green flag back out. Four laps to go here at Phoenix. Will we finish it under green? James Richardson still determined to get around that one main financial Chevrolet of Nick Gunther. But he keeps trying to do on the inside line. Gunther, we've seen, has a very good car on the outside line. And now Chelsea Bowles wants to make it a three-way fight for that second position. And there's the caution. Caution's out. Race will end when we come to the stripe. Jonathan Zorlin will win. Gunther will get second. Richardson third. And Chelsea Bowles will be fourth. So that will end the race. There is no way we will get back green. Dougie Shears will cross in fifth. Jonathan or Jordan Lopez in sixth. And Stephen Pollard the third snatches the final transfer spot into the main event from Tripentacchio Vernio. Vernio eighth, Gonzalez ninth, and Joshua Sakuli also snatched the final top ten spot from Alex Gray. He will finish in the tenth position in only his second non-charter series start in that 33 Chevy Impala. Not really much point of going back and looking at a replay of what brought out the caution because it didn't have any gravity on the outcome up at the front. So as Zorlin crosses the line, it is now two laps to go. The next time by will be the white flag. Jonathan Zorlin coming into this race was 23rd in the point standings. And he will be picking up what will be his first win of his Hershey's Cup Series non-charter career. Zorlin out of Fire Ice Racing becomes the second driver, or no, the third driver, rather, out of Fire Ice Racing. And actually, they completed the sweep. All three of the, of the uh, Fire Ice Racing Toyota Camrys in the non-charter series have now gone to victory lane. Zachary Stoltz did it back at Bristol Dirt. Phil Parker did it back at Dover. And now Zorlin does it here at Phoenix. Now, Phoenix is... Not really a short track, but a lot of people consider it a short track. So if you think about it in that term, it's been the shorter tracks that those Toyota Camrys have won at. Bristol, Dover, and now Phoenix. Dominating performance here for Jonathan Zorlin as well. Got out in front with that pole position. Never looked back. Yes, he had the benefit of running a lot of this race under the caution flag. But regardless, when we were under green flag conditions, he was able to keep himself ahead of Nick Gunther and James Richardson in order to keep himself in the lead and put himself in position to win this race. White flag displayed for the M&M's patriotic Toyota Camry. Just got to make it around one more time and he will be transferring into the main event as the race winner. Nick Gunther will as well along with James Richardson, Chelsea Bowles, Dougie Shears. It's been a while since we've seen him in a main event race. Jordan Lopez also going to be making it in and Stephen Paul with the third getting that final transfer spot into this week's main event which I am being told is going to be run caution free so these guys today had the benefit of cautions on their side with their track position to transfer into the main event they will not have that on their side in the Hershey's Cup Series main event which is also not exactly good news for these seven drivers to transfer because they're going to be rolling off from positions 36 through 42 
in the main event race. They're going to be starting at the back. So that, as we saw today, the back's not exactly a great place to be. Neither is the middle of the pack, because that's where a lot of the wrecks take place. So that will be very interesting to see what these drivers are going to be able to do. Mired back in traffic in a race that will be run with no caution flags. But Jonathan Zorland is going to at least celebrate today. Down the front straightaway, he will cross the line and pick up the win here today at Phoenix International Raceway, first of his career. Stains will not be official until the entire field crosses the line, but we will step out nonetheless and wait for them to be official. Now they are. We gave you the top 10. Ryan George will come home in 11th. I'm trying to look for one driver that's missing, and that is the zero of Alex Gray. Where the heck did he go? Oh, I guess he was involved in the wreck, actually. I'll bet he was involved in the wreck. We'll find out in just a minute. David Culpepper, 12th. LaPlante will get 13th. Daniel Gilbert, one of the only drivers, really, in the top five in the point stands coming into this race that didn't have a problem, so his points lead will grow heading into next week. Angel Navarro will get 15th. Kev Shearer will get 16th. Well, actually, maybe his points lead won't grow that much. He'll have only a 14-point lead now over Kev Shearer. Christian Merrick Jr. gets 17th. Noah Carson, 18th. Trace Williams in 19th. And Cody Smart will complete the top 20. The drivers that were involved in the incident, I think we can tell because of who retired out of the race there. Alex Miller, Caleb Farrell, Paul Minnick, and Alex Gray, 27th through 30th. They were probably the reason for that final caution coming out. And they finish out of the race as a result. You can see on down here through the remainder of the finishing results, the drivers that finished out of the race only 23 cars finished on the lead lap of 26 drivers that even finished out today's event. So that is going to do it. Jonathan Zorland, though, he is going to head to victory lane as he picks up the win here today at Phoenix. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and become part of the crew today. We've shown you full fishing results. Here are your point standings heading into next week. Tomorrow, we've got the Pizza Deck Series coming here for their 14th race of the season. That'll be a wild one. And then a caution-free race for our Hershey's Cup Series main event coming up in two days' time. We will see you guys next time as you've been watching production of the Answer Race, off-flight racing at its best.